Well, good morning, guys. It's Pastor Andy. Today is April the 15th, and we're looking together in Psalm chapter 66. Psalm chapter 66 is the second of the four psalms here of praise and worship to God for what he has done. David starts out talking to the whole world, the nation, all of the nations of the world, the Gentiles, everyone. He starts off, shout joyful praises to God, all the earth. Sing about the glory of his name. Tell the world how glorious he is. This is kind of a missionary psalm. It's to everyone. David is telling everyone that God has blessed them and God has done wonderful things, so we need to praise him. Then he shifts gear in verse 8 and changes it to the nation of Israel. He says, let the whole world bless our God and loudly sing his praises. Well, that right there tells us that when we praise God and when we worship, we need to get a little bit loud. I like that. Verse 12, then you put a leader over us. We went through fire and blood and flood but you brought us to a place of great abundance. David is talking about the nation of Israel here. Now he's gone from the whole world, the Gentiles, everybody, to the nation of Israel. He brings it in a step and says, we've been through a lot of trials. We now need to praise God. It's not just for the whole world. It's especially for us because we went through fire and flood, but you brought us to a place of great abundance. And God does that for us as Christians as well. We've been through difficulties. We've been through trials. We've been through, as I said here, fire and flood. We're going through it right now with COVID-19 and all the things that are happening in our entire world. But God is going to bring us through this and we'll have great abundance, just like he did with the nation of Israel, I believe. So he goes from the whole world, the Gentiles, everybody, praise the Lord. Now he comes down into the nation of Israel. You guys need to praise the Lord. Then he even gets more specific than that. Starting in verse 13, he says, Now I come to your temple with burnt offerings to fulfill the vows I made to you. He brings it down to a very personal level. No longer is this a theoretical everybody or the whole nation. Now it's me. I need to praise and bless the Lord. I need to be the one who is worshiping the Lord. It needs to be me. I love verse 18. David says, If I had not confessed the sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God did listen. He paid attention to my prayer. Praise God who did not ignore my prayer or withdraw my unfailing love, or withdraw his unfailing love from me. David said, if I didn't make things right, if I didn't confess my sin before God, then God would not have heard my prayer. And that is so true because the Bible says God does not have to hear the prayer of a person who is living in known sin. If we do not confess the known sin that is in our life, God is not responsible. He's not obligated to hear and to answer our prayers. That's why it's so important for us to keep a short account with God so that he does hear our prayers, so that he will answer our prayers. David said it right here, verse 18, if I had not confessed the sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God did listen. Why did God listen? Because David was one who every time he sinned, he repented. He came to God, he confessed his sin, just like 1 John 1, 9 says, that if we, as talking about Christians, confess our sin, he, that is God, is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. When we confess our sins before God, when we come to him and admit that we are wrong and repent from it, he has promised that he would cleanse us. He'd wipe the slate clean. And that's what David is saying here. When I confessed my sins before God, he wiped it clean and he heard my prayer and he delivered me. Verse 20, praise God who did not ignore my prayer or withdraw his unfailing love from me. And we should praise God because he's done the same thing for us. He doesn't ignore our prayers and he hasn't withdrawn his unfailing love from us. He still takes care of us. He still meets our needs. He's still the God who hears. He's still the God who loves. He is our good, good father. And we need to rejoice in that fact and we need to praise him for that fact today. So get in God's word and read it, study it for yourself. And until tomorrow, God bless you and I'll see you then.